Hey, my name is Doug Mountain. I'm a re-recording mixer. I'm a sound editor and a sound designer. Uh, most notably for the last 15 years, I've been one of the sound designers and consulting engineer on the Grammys for the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences. Uh, I'm approaching my 15th show with them. Uh, I helped design uh, the way that we do the show sound-wise about 15 years ago, to which we haven't really changed it much. Um, but over the years, we've used the TC6000 on the, on the uh, show many times. Um, I've been involved with the TC6000 since it first came out. Uh, Casey brought it to me, I'd say, early around 2000, 2001, somewhere around there. And immediately it kind of started to fill in some needs um, that, that it was uh, desperately needed at that time in the industry. The first was we did not have a box that could contain a 5.1 mix um, with multiband compression. And TC's other products um, have done a really excellent job of multiband compression. So they've kind of been the standard in multiband compression. Um, so with the TC6000 coming out, the 6000 offered us a 5.1 multi-channel version of it and also a way to sort of contain the sub as well. Um, because when you're remixing for um, film and television, you kind of need to box stuff in a little bit. So the 6000 was one of the first boxes that actually allowed us to sort of box it in um, in a single processor where all the channels were working together. So you knew that when you were boxing in this 5.1 mix and you were setting you know, certain uh, thresholds and certain limitations, they were being met. So on that respect alone, the box did an excellent job. But then, a few years later, one of the uh, most important algorithms to hit the industry in a long time was Unwrap. And Unwrap became a very important thing because about that time, um, there was an e enormous need for material to be um, uh, outmixed from stereo to 5.1 and there wasn't a lot of budget to do it. So various techniques were tried and steering and things like that. And um, working with TC and TC's um, designers um, in Europe, we came up with uh, various versions of Unwrap. And Unwrap essentially you know, was the sort of um, one algorithm that really made a difference in this industry and really you know, sold a lot of these boxes. It became a necessary step when creating 5.1 content where you only had a stereo source. What happened in the industry around 2000 was there was an enormous amount of content uh, in the libraries of these studios and um, you know these uh, people who created original creative content. And they had all of these great shows and television shows um, and, and features, but all they had for a lot of these shows was just stereo mix. Because at the time that they created that content, that's all that was required. So they were left in a, um, in a kind of a difficult situation. They did not have a 5.1 mix, and yet their market was demanding a 5.1 mix. Because at that time, we were in the midst of the explosion of DVD. Um, and in some cases, we had a domestic 5.1 mix, but we did not have a 5.1 mix in you know, other languages. So we were able to, using the TC6000 and the Unwrap program, we were able to create 5.1s from original stereo mixes um, that would pass and uh, deliver and meet the requirements of the distribution who was requiring a 5.1 mix. So the box solved it cost effectively for a lot of people and a lot of libraries, you know. So, um, you know, Unwrap, you know, was used to process a lot of that early television and feature film content that was only ever done in stereo. And that box would take a, um, a ProLogic mix and unlace it beautifully, you know, and steer just the right kind of things into the surrounds, and you'd get this very great, unique content. Um, and then the other thing that it helped with is, you know, like even when you were mixing, um, you know, something like that, and you occasionally had to steer, you could actually automate things and, you know, uh, and make changes on the fly, and it was seamless, you know. You could do stuff that would allow you to, you know, kind of get in and out. So it became, you know, a standard box, not only for broadcast, but it became a standard box for home video remixing and distribution. And it also became a standard box for the creation of original content like feature films. Because so often, too, stuff just came and it was the most you ever got was stereo. And, and the job of the mixer was always, how am I going to make this 5.1, you know? And this box solved that problem pretty quickly. The biggest next 
hurdle to be crossed was, was mixed containment. You know, over the years, the industry had suffered from um, a loudness problem that as we kept going, we kept pushing, as we got these dynamic ranges on these mixes, we kept pushing the, the loudness just a little more and a little more and a little more to where he, we had exceeded it, to where it became uncomfortable for a lot of people listening and in their homes and stuff like that. And so we needed to actually now start containing the mixes and pulling them back down into a set of standards that was acceptable to everybody. So when containing a mix, there's nothing better than a multiband compressor, you know, especially because lo low end can run away and, you know, certain effects can cause some dynamic range issues. And this box very nicely can, you know, bring it down. And now with the addition of the radar and some of the other tools that are in there, it's really easy to contain a 5.1 mix and meet the spec that the broadcasters now require us to meet. You know, when you have to hit that minus 24, the last thing you want it to do is sound squished. So, you know, the radar is probably one of the, the, the next best applications in the box. The radar does some, but kind of an amazing thing is it shows you where the energy level was over a time. So you know where to go back in your project and go, you know, I got a little carried away right in here and there's a lot of effects going on. Let me use the, ra the radar tells me approximately where I am and so I can go back and back up my project. And so as, and when you were post mixing and trying to squeeze into this new minus 24 standard, you know, the radar became, a, you know, a, a very necessary way to find where you're sort of either getting too loud or you can find areas where you're too soft if you need to, you know, pump it up a little bit because sometimes you end up a little under, you know, once you started sort of hitting this target uh, loudness specification. So the box, you know, has evolved with the industry needs quite well, you know, it has it has hit all of the sort of needs that the, the, you know, this type of workflow needs. And it's just across multiple, you know, markets. You've got it across post sound. You've got it across home video. You've got it across, um, you've got it across, uh, you know, broadcast. And so it's become an integral part of all of those workflows. Well, I'll tell you from experience that, you know, when you're processing through that box and that's your final stage of your mix, you know that when you get, you know, that particular mix arrives at the consumer's home, it sounds exactly as you remember it. And it translates very well to smaller speaker sets and things like that. You know, and we've gone home and we've listened to mixes, whether it's been a live broadcast singing show or, you know, a, you know, um, a single camera comedy. We go home, we listen to the mix and it sounds just like it. And I think that the 6000 is just such an integral part of making that happen. And then when, you know, it's funny because now you listen to these shows and, and the commercials kick in and, and it's just as loud as the commercials. And it's nice. You know, you don't feel like you're being blasted by commercials anymore. And, you know, you also feel like your content has some dynamic range still. And so this box, you know, was an integral part of making that transition to these new loudness standards.